Hi, I'm Annie Evans. I'm the Director of Education and Outreach for the New American History Project at the University of Richmond. I would love it if you would take a moment to open a new tab in your browser. If you look towards the bottom of your screen, you'll see a bit.ly link. Uh, you're going to want to have the bit.ly open in addition to the recording of this slide presentation. And that way you'll be able to interact with the websites and the tools that we're going to review in this overview. I also would like to draw your attention to the left side of the screen where uh, you can follow us on our various social media accounts. Anytime that we post new learning resources or if our executive director Ed Ayers posts a new piece on our Medium blog, we would love for you to be amongst the first to know. So the best way to do that is to follow us. Um, the Facebook group is a private group for educators and that way it's sort of a safe space for us to collaborate and share resources. So go ahead and pause your video for a moment, grab that bit.ly, and once you've got the slides back up, you can go ahead and unpause and continue watching. So a lot of folks may not be familiar with New American History yet, and so I want you to just sort of imagine a New American History. Perhaps it's not the same kind of course that we took as kids or that our parents had uh, in school, but what we are hoping to accomplish with New American History is to provide teachers and students with tools and resources that include all narratives that present a full and complete version of American history that is somewhat unscripted, that is very much student driven and that really kind of closes in those gaps that perhaps traditional textbooks or history curriculum have left out or um, have not featured everyone's voice. And so these are sort of some of our goals. If you want me to take a moment to kind of review them and, and as we are reflecting on our teaching practice, um, I hope that you will include or think about some of these ideas. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Um, if you're following along with the video and you also have this slide presentation open in a new tab, I invite you to click on that blue bar on the left hand side. That should be a hyperlink that takes you out to our website. Um, I have a screenshot here of our homepage as it appeared when we first launched. Uh, and the screen will change as we are adding, constantly adding new content. So what you're seeing now when you click on that hyperlink is not what I'm gonna be showing you on the screen because we are constantly adding new resources and new tools to the site. But I did wanna let you know that everything that we have created and developed can be used on screens of all sizes. So if you're working with Chromebooks or iPads or students are trying to access through their smartphone, they should be able to use New American History tools uh, on all, all devices. So I'm primarily responsible for curating and creating the learning resources that are part of New American History. And so again, uh, the blue bar on the left is where you can um, locate the learning resources and uh, hyperlink out to that. If you take a look at this menu here, you can search by topic, you can search by reading level. We try and lexile all of our uh, learning resources so that you can find something that's appropriate for the current reading level of your students. We also do a search by grade level and by standards, meaning that um, we do correlate to a variety of national standards. We do not correlate our learning resources to individual state standards as those tend to change quite frequently. Um, but we do have the basic C3 framework, the National Council for Social Studies, the National Geography Standards um, are in there as well. So you can also search by learning strategy. So if you're looking for a lesson that really speaks to civic engagement or encouraging civil discourse, uh, you might wanna look up, up a lesson by learning strategy. If you're looking for 
collaboration strategies or inquiry based, trying to locate something that will promote critical thinking, or if you want to see how literacy skills are embedded, you can search by those learning strategies. Uh, you'll see a little area called trending with teachers when you first go uh, scroll down and those also change as we are adding in new resources and then on the left side there you see uh, what would be considered the student view so when you first click on one of our learning resources you're looking at the teacher view which includes things like the standards and the strategies and teaching tips students really don't need to look at that and so we've created a separate student view and you can uh, post that in your learning management system whether you're on canvas or blackboard or schoology or however you normally post uh, your resources digitally for your students So uh, if you are on Twitter, we're going to have a little uh, time for you to pause. What I'd like you to do is to go to the learning resources site using that hyperlink and just take, you know, a few minutes to explore. And what I'd like you to do is to send us a tweet um, and link out to one of the learning resources that you are most interested in. Just, you know, your general first impressions and make sure you tag us at New American Hist and use the hashtag, hashtag JOI so that we can find it. So at this time, please pause your video, take a few minutes to explore the learning resources and respond by tweeting out a link and tagging us. Tell us what it is about that resource that you would like to explore pilot more. Okay, so I will be checking Twitter uh, for the next few weeks as we are moving through the JOI Institute and I'm really curious to see which resources you are most interested in exploring. So I hope you responded to that question. All right, so now we're going to take a look at Bunk. Bunk is our current events tool which was created by Ed Ayers and Tony Field. Tony is our Bunk editor uh, and it, if you look at sort of a collage of what's going on in the world and the idea behind bunk is that we are constantly combing the internet for the most interesting articles, news stories, journal entries, uh, and then we are excerpting those and posting those so that students can start to make historic connections. So on the left hand side, you see the hyperlink out to bunk. If you click on that, you'll notice that again, the screen is going to look very different. Uh, in fact, sometimes the screen that you see in the morning will have changed by the afternoon or change again in the evening as we are constantly adding new content as well to Bunk. So go ahead and take a few moments to explore the Bunk homepage on your own using the tab in your browser that you've opened. And then whenever you're done, exploring you can click back on the video okay so um, if you have been exploring bunk for the last few moments you notice that when you click on an article uh, there was a connections box and when you hit that, these are the connections that you can make. So the original article that you clicked off of on the homepage would appear here on the left, and then there'll be a stack of cards. Uh, and in the middle, you'll see some icons and some additional tags. So for this particular article on Shirley Chisholm, which is one of our newest learning resources, um, you notice that there are 12 connections which have a similar idea to the original article. And then underneath there are some other tags that you could also explore. Um, over here is an arrow, so you would click on the arrow and you would go through this stack of cards. And as you click on each card, you'll notice that these icons will change as well as the tags. And hopefully you'll see, you're seeing that now as you are exploring Bunk. One of the features that you can find up here in the menu is a uh, bunk collection. So the idea behind bunk collections is that students can begin to 
curate their own list of resources. Perhaps you are having them narrow down a topic for their National History Day presentation. Uh, or as a teacher, you can put together your own collections to model for your students. Students can collect three, five, seven articles. They can organize them. They can annotate them over here on the right hand side. And then eventually they can share them either with you or with their classmates. So depending on what your school's policy is on student sharing work digitally, um, for students 13 and younger, we have a, a alternative uh, feature called bunk assignments, which allows you to send something out to them using a code rather than uh, email. And that way uh, you're not breaking any of the uh, security rules surrounding younger students. So the bunk collections are a way that you can create uh, curated resources or your students can begin to create their own collections and you can have them annotate them. You could post questions over here in the response boxes that they could respond to, or you could just leave it more open-ended and let them annotate or uh, take notes on their own collection. So again, if you want to pause the video and take a few moments to explore bunk collections, remember to go up here through the menu and it will take you to uh, the directions for bunk collections. Okay, so if you want to pause your video now and take a few moments to play around, maybe create your own quick bunk collection or assignment. We would love to have you tweet out a link to that. It will send you a link in your email once you have completed and finalized the collection. Um, and make sure you tag us. We'd also lo love it if you would tag Bunk History so that Tony Field, our bunk editor, knows that everyone was on bunk today. And use the hashtag JOI. So we're going to have you pause the video now, take a few moments to explore bunk, put together your own bunk collection or assignment, and then come back here to the video and we'll continue. Welcome back. Um, in a separate presentation, you will be hearing a lot more about American Panorama. American Panorama is our digital atlas of United States history. Uh, Justin Madron, who uh, works on Panorama, along with Rob Nelson and Nate Ayers, uh, are, is doing a whole separate set of presentations as part of this institute. So I won't spend as much time on American Panorama today as I might normally but there is a link out here on the left-hand side for you to explore Panorama. And I strongly encourage you to spend some time this summer uh, really digging into Panorama. There's a wealth of information in there. Uh, the way that they visualize data and visualize historic documents is a way that I think most teachers and students have never seen before. It's a very unique tool and it's one that I've really taken great joy in using to collect learning resources. Uh, some of them you may have already explored in our learning resources library. So this is Pan American Panorama. Uh, again, Justin has done a whole separate uh, presentation for you that does a beautiful job explaining mapping inequality. Um, the blue bar on the left is hyperlinked out to that again. So if you haven't already watched Justin's presentation, I strongly suggest that you watch that uh, to get a really good overview of how mapping inequality works because um, I'm going to be doing a separate video for you that kind of walks you through that learning resource. So you definitely want to make sure you view Justin's presentation before you view that one. But um, this is a topic that's been in the news quite recently, as you know. Um, it's a topic that has been generating a lot of conversation. Hopefully, we're going to be moving in a direction as a country using tools like this to help us kind of understand what we um, are dealing with in terms of systemic racism. And this tool will be a great teaching resource for you and your students as you explore that topic this year. Uh, 
another map that uh, Justin mentioned and that you'll want to spend a good time exploring, especially if you teach civics or government, um, is electing the House. So electing the House is uh, all of the House of Representative uh, election data from 1840 up through the 2018 midterms uh, for the House of Representatives. And so there is a very unique slider tool around the bottom of the map where you can slide back and forth between the different decades and um, the map will change based on what uh, era or what election cycle you're in. It will give you a little bit of information over here on the left about what political parties may or may not have come into power or come into play. And on the right, it gives you information, um, uh, particularly which districts flipped in each election cycle, which is really interesting for students. Um, each of these dots in the cartogram view, you can click on that and drill down to your local voting districts or you can also look at in a map view where kids might be able to recognize their own city or county boundaries. You also have a choice of looking at the map either just by the winner or also by the strength of the victory, which is sometimes really interesting to kids to see, ooh, was it a close race or was it a landslide? Um, and so you've got a couple of different views of the map here. So take a few moments to explore uh, electing the house if you like. We can pause the video and then you can come back. Okay, uh, one of our newest resources or collaborations is the future of America's past. So Ed is the host of this PBS series and each episode is approximately 30 minutes in length and Ed is traveling to some of the most uh, unexplored or, or maybe unexplained places in American history. So um, this particular screen, I've highlighted two of the episodes that take place right here in Virginia. Uh, one of them, Freedom's Fortress, explores the for African First Landing in 1619 in the area that is now known as Fort Monroe. And on the bottom of the screen, you see Ed is at the Moton Museum with Kenan Townsend, and he is exploring the story of Barbara Johns and the student walkout. So we currently have eight episodes and a special short on the 1918 flu pandemic, which is very timely. Uh, and we have developed a number of learning resources for these episodes and should have learning resources for every episode uh, finished by the end of the summer so that you'll be able to use them in your classrooms this fall. So if you want to take a moment to pause the video, uh, this links you out to the Future of America's Past website where you can find all of the videos in their entirety. Uh, and then we also have some links here to the learning resources for two of those episodes. So take a few moments to explore if you like, pause the video, and then come back. Okay, our, our third and uh, final tweet storm is just take a few minutes to look at and share a map from Panorama that you found interesting. Um, tweet out the link to which map you selected. Make sure again that you tag us here at New American History. This time we ask that you tag Justin and Rob at the Digital Scholarship Lab, uh, UR underscore DSL. And of course, use the hashtag JOI so that everyone in this institute can follow along. So we're curious to see which map it is that you found most interesting. And we'll be looking on Twitter to uh, see who tagged us and what your thoughts are. Uh, some of you may be Backstory fans. Ed has been uh, involved with this podcast since the beginning and over the last 12 years some of the hosts have changed and new hosts have been added but um, sadly Backstory is uh, come to an end at the time when you are viewing this presentation. Uh, the final episode will be airing on July 3rd. Uh, it's an amazing podcast. I've been a Backstory listener uh, for many years, really since the beginning. Um, my students and I have enjoyed listening to certain episodes. 
both as part of classroom uh, activities, but also just on our own. I have a number of students who will come in and say, hey, Ms. Evans, did you listen to Backstory on Friday? And, and want to talk about the episode. So um, if you have a moment, there's an audio link in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen that you can link out. And uh, this is an episode called, uh, the we call it the best of Ed, uh, where each of the hosts towards the end of Backstories uh, last semester were asked to highlight some of their favorite episodes and so we've got the best of ed episode queued up here in the slide if you want to take a few moments uh, to listen to that and pause the video Well, so that was a very quick overview of some of our new American history tools and resources. Again, I'm Annie Evans. Uh, my contact information is on the screen. We would love for you to join us on social media. Please reach out and let us know how we can support your work. We are creating these tools and resources for you, and we want them to be the most helpful resources that will really engage your students and get you starting to think about reimagining what a new American history might be like. So thanks for spending some time with me. And uh, again, you'll want to watch Justin Madrin's presentation on redlining uh, before you view my second video, which is going to talk a little bit about how to use that map in your classroom. So thanks for listening and I look forward to engaging with every one of you in the Institute.